welcome to a coding chapter. Today we're going to work on a drawing app using p5.js. So let's start with creating a new repository. I'm going to call it paint app. I'm going to make it public. Add a readme. I don't need a git ignore. So I'll just create it. Now that it's created, I'll copy the link. I'll go here, open up code, a terminal, and clone it. So I'm going to clone, or actually git clone, paste the link, HTTPS, and it's done. So right now we have that here. Let's close this, open it again here drop in the folder and now we have that okay now we can get started and let's see let's create a new file the index.html and we also want the style css that we're going to link so let's head over here and with emmet which is a built-in plugin for VS Code. You can just type in doc. See, it says Emmet abbreviation and hit enter. Bam. Okay. We can change the title, paint app, and we're going to still, actually, let's see. Let's maximize this. Okay. Uh, let's link and then CSS. Hit enter. All right, yeah, it's a style CSS. If, for example, I wanted to change it, change the location of the style, I could type in styles and drop it in there, move it, okay? But now I need to update this. So it's not going to be like that anymore. It needs to be styles, style CSS. So that that should still that will work now. Now that is ahead. Uh, we also want a uh, let's call it script or styling. Let's see, sty uh, I'm gonna call it graphical user interface dot js, and I'm going to create. So here's the new folder icon. A new folder called libraries. Okay, cool. Drop it in there. Libraries, yes, I'm sure. Okay, so now we have the, yay, um, the JavaScript file, the CSS, and the index. I still need to add the JS file. So let's, we can do that at the top, or we can do that at the bottom. Let's do it at the bottom. The difference is going to be that this is going to load after everything else has been created. And this is going to be libraries. All right, good. Now, because we're using um, p5.js, we want a copy of that. So let's say p5.js. Oops. Okay. All right. Um, let's go to download. And what we want to do is we can use a full uncompressed version or the min version. I'm going to use the full uncompressed version for this. It's, it's bigger, but it will help you with debugging. It's more readable. Oh, okay, where the repos, paint app, libraries, b5.js. Good. Now, as we may know, we need a sketch.js file as well. So I'm going to create it. Sketch.js. 
and that can be at the root or it can also be placed in the library so I'm going to add both so libraries p5.js first and because the order does matter libraries and then sketch okay save that so we have a good number of files right now that's okay we know what they're for uh, let's start by adding a basic structure html structure to our app so it's going to be a dev actually i'm gonna dev i'm gonna give it a name of usually you will you will call it content or wrapper something like that i'm gonna call it content okay and inside this content i'm gonna have a list for the different tools right okay so i'm gonna we're just going to do black and white we're not gonna delve too much into colors for now it's gonna be just black and white so we're only going to have a list of the different tools that we ha are going to add and today we're going to add just two so let's see we're going to add the um, the pencil or pen tool to draw freely and a line tool let's see now uh, inside content we don't need to add much more than just for call it to list right okay so dynamically or programmatically we're going to add the different tools inside the tool list okay and we also need our drawing area let's call it actually the uh, drawing we'll call it canvas wrapper we can give it any name canvas wrapper drawing area drawing canvas but inside this is where we're actually going to create the canvas canvas goes here there we go uh, now let's take a look at how this looks let's see how this looks uh -huh. Uh, we are not really going to see anything blank as expected that's good all right, all right. now oh uh, let's say yeah let's go to sketch you know we need to create a function called setup no arguments okay and here we're going to create canvas canvas and let's make it 600 by 600 All right uh we also need a draw function All right. uh, we can make the canvas a background uh Let's see. I'll do 150. It looks gray. There we go. All right. So that is working. We didn't need to do much in order for the canvas to be created. So what is happening is, let's see, let's inspect this. So what is going on here? So look, main canvas. So the canvas is actually being created inside its own element, right? We're not giving it uh, any specific properties to, to the canvas. So it's being created after whatever we uh, structure our, our HTML in. So for example, here we stop at this, right? So this is part of the body, the HTML body. So after this, this is where p5.js is creating 
main okay so it's calling it main and inside main it's creating a canvas element yeah canvas is an HTML tag all right so what what we want to do when we want to manipulate this um, further or more precisely is actually give canvas a parent right so this function create canvas return something we're not using it but it's still returning something right so we're going to create a variable and actually let's expose that here yeah let's expose that here with let my canvas right equals snow and I'm going we also need the parent so let's call it canvas parent equals no all right we're going to create uh, user variables background still good there's no problem but now that we have the reference to to the canvas that is created by the create canvas function we can assign its parent that tells the HTML or the browser how to place it so instead of p5.js arbitrarily creating a main element and inside that a canvas element we're going to tell hey actually we want you to place the canvas here so let's say my canvas dot parent is going to be what oh okay so that's where we use the the p5.js select function we're going to select something with a class a class that starts with a period an id with a pound sign a class of drawing what do we call it canvas wrapper canvas wrapper okay and we can actually take this out of here and assign that to canvas parent canvas parent there we go All right now this is assuming that canvas parent is um it's not known right it's not undefined you can validate for that if you wish but for now we're going to live like that you can validate that if you wish but for now we can leave it like that now let's see let's save now canvas is still being created here hmm, that's strange canvas should go there uh, let's see my all right, let's console log a pen child of no uh, all right so yeah so that's what's happening it's not correct it should be a hyphen there we go elements so we should have it here there we go there it is now we also have a draw function we're not going to use right now and right now we need to take a look at the tools yes but actually before that let's work into the styles so what you can do is use a reset if you wish or you can also do your own uh, reset for example this let's see and it's border size oh no, box sizing border box you always want that margin zero padding zero okay let's save that and let's see we have a tool list and we want our tool list so if for example we hit we add three different items in the column
if we add, for example, three divs with a class, let's say, tool, multiply that by three, B, C, right? To A, to B, and tool C. How's it gonna look? Okay, it's gonna look like that. I don't really want it to look like that, right? So let's give it some styling. I want it to run across paint like so. Let's see. I want it to look like this. So a bar up there with a button and each button is going to have an icon. You can have an icon and text button icon and you can have text there as well to one fourteen for example that we can go like that we can kind of have tool two for example right you can do just an icon or icon and text now for this case let's do icon and text okay. and let's style it like that so if that's the case we want a we already have the tool list which is the big bar and we need to add icons right which is a tool inside right and we're not going to add that uh, here we just want it uh, to know how to style it. So I'm inside this. I'm actually going to do an image. And it's going to be tool icon. All right. I'm going to change the source later. Nope. Nope. Actually, that needs to be here. Mm -hmm. Right. And I want span, for example, and it's going to be to a. We're going to, going to delete these later because they should be added uh, programmatically through JavaScript. This is just for the styling purposes. So we can take a look at how it's going to look. All right, okay. So, all right, so that's good. But I we want it to, to be horizontal like that. All right, now to do that, we're going to style the parent of these tools. So the parent of these elements is tool list. So let's go ahead and do that. Actually, uh, we also want to do uh, before, and we also want after. Okay, and we're going to let's see. Let's take a look at the. Uh, let's see split right okay yeah, that's okay we are looking at two lists so two list mm -hmm. okay if I say for example background crimson I like crimson because it's very contrast. It has good contrast against other colors. All right, so that is it. But actually, let's see. I want it to be display flex. Oh, see, now they're horizontal. Great. That's exactly what we wanted, right? Cool. Now, I want the tool tool class element to have a fixed width. So I want to give it a width 
and we can actually just do W and then let's say oh, I want 75 pixels for example hit enter bam height H 100 bam all right as you can see they are the text is at the top and but the element itself is 100 pixels by by 75 right 75 wide 100 tall great now uh, uh, let's see if we can find an icon because we want to let's see uh, font awesome let's eventually we're gonna grab an icon let's see a, a brush let's look for a brush start for free no, I don't want that no I want to search um, no. So let's let's do this. Font awesome brush I can bam clean brush. All right, there we go. Now um we want this. It's one hundred. Yeah, one solid, and we can download it the SVG. You can also create a add an I class as a icon. Both are fine. One just relies on the icon to be downloaded off the internet. The other one is local because you have downloaded it. Okay, well, let's do download. So you agree with that? So here in your code, you say you would say uh. I can from font awesome dot com for example All right All right good A green download we're going to download it to our repo paint app uh Let's see assets. Right? Assets. Okay, here we're gonna call it paint icon. Now, yeah. okay. Now the thing with SVGs, in case you're not familiar, is that they can, if they're formatted like so they have a stretchable size so see it becomes smaller as I decrease the size of the window or bigger not all SVGs will do that and their code needs to be uh, set up like that that has to do with uh, the viewport and, uh, and the ratio that you create for it Now, let's see, let's close that. Okay, we have this icon. And we can add that. So if, for example, uh, actually, let's leave that there. We're gonna look for another icon later. I want an icon for 2A, right? So I want that icon it's going to be a two icon. We're going to have it width uh, 50, not 75. It's going to be 50 pixels, right? And height uh, 50 pixels as well. Okay. Nothing's going to happen. Oh, there we go. See? Now it has a fixed uh, size, but it doesn't have anything inside of it. We can still format it. Right? We can format how these two items are being displayed. Now, let's say that a tool 
it's actually also a container for two items inside of it. And we're going to do display flex. Now, if you remember before when we used the display flex, they were the items to A, B, and C were arranged vertically, one on top of the other, like a stack. Now they're beside each other. If we do that, it's going to happen, it should happen something very similar, like that. But now they're overlapping, right? We don't want that. We want display flex, but now we need to tell it that the arrangement is going to be vertical. So you can say um, flex flow and column. We can do no wrap, for example, right? In this case, we don't need it. We don't need to specify that. It's going to make no difference right? because we don't have too many items. But you can leave it for convenience or to make it a habit. Now, they're the way we want them, but they're also at the very top, right? Let's say, let's say align or justify items and there's going to be uh, center uh, center perhaps it would be align items center yeah so that's yes so they're aligned like that right at the top but now they're in the middle we can create let's say Justify content center. Let's see, does that work? There we go. And now we are aligning them. We're now justifying it. The the keywords are the same, but if you do column or a row, like vertical or horizontal, they're going to be different they actually swap roles. Align is going to be the, normally is the vertical alignment and justify is the horizontal alignment. But when you change from, from row to column, like we have here, they swap roles. Align is going to be what we see as horizontal and justify is going to be what we see as vertical. So now we have them centered just like the way just the way we want them, right? Uh, we can leave that there for now, just for um, visual feedback. And let's see, we can actually remove this background, right? Perhaps we want. Uh, a border right so, so let's say so here for example you can select the text and if we want it not for it to be selectable the text right we say user select none right? you can click on the item but now you cannot select any text which is something unlike right? we can also change the cursor right now the cursor is the same throughout. Right? But what if we wanted to change it? What if we want cursor? Actually, uh, we can make a choice for it to be on the icon only or the whole thing. Let's do the icon only, okay? In this case, for practice. So it's going to be not in the tool item, which is all of it, right? The tool is all of that. No, we want it only when the user selects the icon itself. So it's going to be in tool icon. And we're going to say that it's going to be cursor pointer. See? Bam, bam, bam. Only for the icon, not anything else. Right? 
Now, if, for example, you want to use variables instead of with, right? So you're, you're testing out different, uh, different widths. You want to use a var, for example, I can width 50 pixels. I can height 50 pixels. And if we want to use that, we use the var function and inside we call width variable we want. So we want I can width mm -hmm. I can height. There we go. See no change. If I did for example do 75 here, 75 here, that would change. But let's leave it at 50. Mm -hmm we're using the variable so you can use variables you can have 20 50 variables here if that's what you need two icons and actually let's open this actually we can leave the html here for now uh, scroll it to the right a little bit and work on the sketch all right to split right yeah, I can close that uh, HTML here whoa okay HTML so all right so we know that we are creating a canvas and we are telling the Dom we're selecting the parent and that is over here right mm -hmm. Now, what we want is to create our tools. And what we're going to do that is use a toolbox. So it's like a tool manager. A tool manager is going to handle the different tools, right? Is what, what's going to know what tools it has. It's going to know um, which tool is selected, like that. The tools by themselves they will do their, their their thing but the tool manager or toolbox is going to use them right? it's going okay you're selected you're active now do your thing right it's going to tell that to each tool and let's create that so in the libraries we're going to create another one called toolbox.ds in this toolbox is going to be a function it's going to be called tool or tool manager i was calling tool manager you can give it any name really if it needs uh, arguments you can add arguments we don't right now so i'm gonna this is going to have um something called tools which is going to be an array of the, with the different tools and say it's going no this we're also going to know which one is active tools uh, actually no uh, selected or you can call it active right active tool for example right no and we're also going to create a function this dot add tool it's going to be a function right um doesn't take any arguments and for example what is it going to actually no, it does it does need a, an argument so it's gonna need an object i'm gonna call this new tool right and we're going to use different things on a new tool but let's get to there let's get there in a second because we're going to create a new tool 
down here and on my library I'm going to create a new file this is going to be draw dot yeah so it's draw tools for example draw tool This is going to be a constructor function, then we have function called draw tool. Okay. Not going to take any arguments. You can choose to maybe one argument that is totally fine. Uh, yeah, that's different. Zoom and a function. Okay. So this is going to have an icon, right? An icon. And what we want is actually the the path to find the icon. So we know um, what we want is uh, assets. Plain icon as you right. Copy path. Draw tool and all right. We don't want all of that. We only need that. But we need to change the, the slashes. All right. So all right. like that, right? Mm -hmm. Perfect. So we only did this, for example. Right, we save that. Add tool. Now this new tool is going to have an icon, right? But who's going to use that? Oh, that is going to be used by Sketch. So Sketch is going to have a tool, a tool manager, right? Let's tool box toolbox equals no and then we use it and we say hey uh, actually toolbox is going to be a new instance of tool manager right tool manager doesn't need any arguments any parameters right yeah doesn't need any um no we want to add a tool so let's say okay now that we have toolbox we're going to add a tool and we're going to add actually we're going to add a new instance of something called draw tool right draw tool doesn't take any parameters so empty braces parenthesis empty parenthesis like that right If we want, let's see, in the toolbox, right. what we want is to create the icon. In that case, what we're going to do is, because we're going to work with HTML, is add the HTML. All right. We're going to create a, let's see, let new tool equals Actually, tool equals. Oh, it's already fine. So I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to call it tool equals create div, which is a p5.js function. And we're going to give it all the HTML that it needs. So what HTML does it need, right? So remember when we did this, we're not drawing the outer box. We're not drawing the screen box that's already there. We want is the individual tools, right? Tool one, tool two, tool three. And we want the HTML for that. So what we already have is example you have div class tool right okay so 
We're gonna flatten that. We're gonna flatten that. And paint. Uh, no, actually, uh, notepad. I don't want to paste that. Okay. So whatever HTML I'm going to put there, uh, it's going to be something similar to this. I'm going to create a div. Mm -hmm. And that div, we're going to say that it is We're not going to add the class here, actually in a, a method that you can use, but we're going to say inside this div, there's going to be an image. All right, so the source of that image, or yeah, the source of that image is going to be what we already have here, right? It's new tool dot, so it's going to be new tool dot icon we should have that already right and because we want to concatenate that we want that and now because we're using quotes to set up the html what we actually need is what we actually need is apostrophes like that right it's the beginning apostrophe and then and with an apostrophe new tool icon apostrophe we're not gonna have any alts so we're gonna delete that yeah you can leave a space source class is going to be a tool icon yep. mm -hmm. this image that we add in is going to have a class icon and it's going to have also span and the span is going to have so we end that there and this is text right and actually let's do new tool dot text or tool text we will need to concatenate that, right? So we do that. Finish that with an apostrophe as well. Be sure to add the plus sign here. Okay, that looks good. So apostrophe starts and plus plus concatenation, apostrophe starts and ends. Concatenation, apostrophe starts and ends. So that's okay. I'm going to paste this here. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, didn't trust it. translate completely. Let's see. Uh, okay, there. Perfect. Looks good. Now, uh, if you remember, we used a new tool dot Tech, uh, new tool dot text tool that means that we're expecting this to have text when this dot text to or tool text tool text tool text equals and I'm going to say uh, this one is be draw right that's the text for it now uh, if you noticed if you notice we have created an image element um, just by using text what you could do if you wanted to you could say let new image equals create image and then here you have your source and all the other code right and then which is what actually we're going to do in a little bit we could say new image dot parent and then add what is here right but not in this case um, we're going to leave it like that because it's like kind of, kind of the Russian dolls one inside the other and you could do that you could have uh, an, uh, create an element programmatically with a p5.js function like create image 
and give that a parent right this is your parent now and then edit that parent but when you edit the parent you want to be able to edit the HTML so that that would get a little messy when you want to add things you can append as well you can append HTML that is fine but you cannot really edit the order that would take much more now coding more and more much more lines but I'm just gonna keep it simple because we're not doing too much crazy stuff then the tool is this right bam good and we're gonna say tool dot parent and okay so what's gonna be its parent uh-huh wait hold on we know that tool one for example right has an icon it has a text and its parents going to be actually the tool list right the parents going to be this tool list what do i do would i do yes tool list uh no actually we need to give it a uh an element right if we it could be a dom element it could be a p5.js element for example we need to p5.js right and then go to reference and it's very important I, I already know this but just for sake of checking out the reference right you should always go back here so you can go to you can go to element constructor just for basically for html elements p5.js html elements right so if we look for, oh, here, parent, look. So it attaches the element to the parent specified, a way of setting the container for the element, and yada, yada, yada. So it accepts either a string ID. Okay, if we give it an ID, right? If we did something like ID equals A, B, C, D, F, that supposedly would work. I wouldn't attach it right now. Uh, it can be a dumb node. So dump node would be something like um, tool.elt. That becomes a dump node. I'm gonna actually I'm gonna I'm gonna try that as well. Or a p5 elements, right? If no argument is given, it returns the, the parent node. So we're gonna say the tool is going to be actually. How do we return? How do we return a p5 uh, element? Oh, actually, with the select function. So I will go to select, select, huh, huh, yep, 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 mm -hmm. So select canvas, right? So that's that's for um, something, for anything that is a canvas. The canvas HTML tag, right? And that uh, could actually work here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, but right not right now. We we're working with the tool list, not the canvas. Uh huh. So that's what we need to do. So we need to be we need to use the as I said before a period for a class or a pound sign for a for an ID. So let's see. We do dot tool list right, and what if we console console log the the tool we should see uh, we should see that or we can console parent right and you're gonna say it should should have the same thing uh -huh. let's see f12 console the console tool manager is not defined oh of course it's not defined we haven't added it here yet so we need to add script source libraries we need toolbox and the toolbox needs the draw tool okay mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go back here. 
wall. Can tell of no. Right. So this is. When is this happening? So in sketch twelve. Tool manager add tool in toolbox. Okay. So try to add it. Uh, tool manager add tool. Uh -huh. So let's actually step into it. I'm going to go to libraries. I'm going to go to toolbox and I'm going to see what is going on here. Refresh. Okay. My tool. Undefined and tool. And I created, we created an element and tool parent. Oh yeah. It's not tool list. It's like I said, it has to be select tool list, right? Okay. Refresh. Bam, bam. Yep. Now the console. All right. So see, now it returns something. Why did it return? What tool parent returns? Tool parent returns, as we saw. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Tool parent returns a P5 element. Mm hmm. The pairing node, actually, the pairing node, which is a dumb node. What it returns is a dumb node. How do we know that? Because if we do this, all right, dumb node, remember that. Now, uh, reference again, and we do select. All right, what does this return? First element, yep. Mm -hmm. And it returns a P5 element. Right. Dump node, parent returns a dump node, and select returns a P5 element. The P5 element has inside of it a dump element. So, for example, if what we did was uh, let. Uh, Parent element equals this, right? Parent element. And let's, we're going to inspect an element or we can console log it. All right, so we're going to console log parent element. That should not be the same as what we did before. What we did before was console log and we did um, tool.parent, right? Like that. That's actually what we did, but we need to do this after. We have set the parent. Mm -hmm. Now let's see. How does it look? Bam, 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 bam. All right, so we have that. That's a P5 element. And bam. This is a DOM element, right? So inside the parent, the P5 element, we have a DOM element. Let's see, uh -huh. Bam. Yeah. let's remove the, the break and let's work the way it is. All right, so look, huh, it's draw. It's, but it's not, look, it's not looking the same, right? So what is going on? Tell, actually, let's inspect that. And we can compare it with its siblings. So we have a div. Oh, but look, this div doesn't have a class tool. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to do then. So we're going to say tool dot class. I'm going to say um, tool. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, perfect. So now that changed. So before it didn't have that class. Now it did. Oh, now it does. All right, tool down. This also has a class tool item, right? And this we didn't set up any any uh, classes or specific styling for the text, which is okay. You know, leave that like that for now. Um, so question, could we have done something like this, right? Um, class equals tool, right? Tool. Could we, would we have done that? Let's find out. No, it doesn't. Because everything that is before, as we know, everything that is before, like the, the class tool, everything that is here as in options, right? Attributes, actually, these are attributes, right? Attributes of this one are going to be not added like that. Right? You can add, this would not work, right? Because what if I close it like that, for example? Okay, so perhaps that doesn't work. How about we close it, right? So let's see. Doesn't work either. Hmm? It doesn't work either. There might be a way that I don't know about, but adding uh, classes or IDs like that doesn't work. So if we wanted, for example, to add ID, we could add an ID of uh, my tool, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one's down here for some reason. It's like, okay, so, all right, yeah, yeah, so that doesn't work. Let's see, uh, P5 elements, ID, actually it's just ID, not add ID, ID. Okay, so yeah, we can add an ID, but only with these functions, we cannot add it through here, right? So actually what you type, what you put in here is everything, right? Everything that you want it to be inside, all the HTML you want it to be inside and close the tag with a div like this. So what if we delete this? What if we don't include that? Now, let's see what happens. Does it break? No, it doesn't break. It doesn't break. But you can just leave it, you know, you can leave it, right? There's no difference. It knows, okay, okay, you already closed the tag. B5 says, oh, I don't need to close the tag myself. So it is up to you. You can leave it with or without. Let's see, yeah, without, looks good. Nothing breaks. Uh, actually, I'm not gonna use an ID for here. Okay, so we already created this, right? We created a draw icon. All right, now let's delete the other ones. Those were just placeholders. So now that uh, the way we're adding the tool works, let's do that. Okay, so we have seen that this is a... Um, p5 dot element right and to parent is actually a dom element so that is the difference between the two actually that goes here Mm -hmm. Console log, parent element, tool parent. If we go back here and we remember 
what the parent returns so you can um, accept a string ID dump node or p5 element right we have used the dom node we have seen dump node we have seen the p5 elements what about the string ID yeah that, that would work apparently so if to list has an ID of ASDF and we say to parent we say okay the ID of your parent is a is ASDF right and do it all right so how's that gonna going to look no difference mm -hmm. no difference so it, it already says okay your tool my daddy my parent is going to be ASDF cool you can also do that mm -hmm. so now no need to if you want it to to be like kind of simpler like that you can use ID for sure for sure you can use an ID I'm gonna leave that there all right I'm gonna leave that there for now but we're going to uh, console we don't need these all right we already saw what this is we already saw what this does mm -hmm. and wait hold on we change parent elements all right yeah we can leave it like that let's remember that our other option was parent and then what we did was instead of creating this variable and using that variable here what we could have done is asdf we could have done that as well the, when do i want one or the other well it seems it's you will use this when you want to do more things with it right or you don't have access to the ID. I don't have access to ID. I don't know what ID it has, or it doesn't have any ID. So I would use this, right? I select something. Or if I already know the ID, you can do that. And I don't want to manipulate the parent at all, right? You can very well do that. You can very well do it like that. Yeah, but uh, right now our tool is not doing anything really, right? Not do, doing anything on the canvas. Hmm. Okay. So we what we actually want is our draw tool to have a function that we can call it anything, but let's call it draw, right? Or for um, change sake, right? Let's see. Um, action. Let's call it action. Now this action is going to be going to actually draw right but when is it going to draw it's going to draw when the mouse is pressed mm -hmm. mouse is pressed p5.js variable right so p5.js updates this variable's value all the time mm -hmm. go here to that reference mouse pressed I know it's mouse is pressed so it's a property it's a variable mouse is pressed right bam press not pressed so it's just like that let's see so if the mouse is pressed we want we want it the same the same behavior as when you are doing this right when the mouse is pressed when it's held down mm -hmm. bam, bam. Bam, bam. okay so if the mouse is pressed how do we draw let's draw with lines like tiny little lines so if um what we do like this right uh line mouse x but actually i need a previous coordinate to draw a line uh -huh, okay so let's set up something previous right so let's say let previous x equals could be anything you can give it any name any value it could be minus one for example right 
you can even say no right let previous y equals no so okay so i know i know right now i cannot do um previous x comma previous y comma and i wanted to react with the mouse cursor so that would be mouse x right? the location of the cursor and mouse y i cannot do that because previous x is null right whenever it's going to access this previous x is null and line is going to give me a headache it's going to complain real bad it's like look i caught action it's not a function oh wait hold on what's that yeah action is not a function right? action equals action equals function mm -hmm. okay no. so so even if i for example i wanted to toolbox and when i add a tool i call this this method right new tool dot action right Let's say new to the action. Huh. Okay, this is strange. Like I don't want to break point there. Uh, let's see. Sources new to action. Mm -hmm. And let's step in there. Okay, yeah, it's mouse is not pressed. Right, of course, of course, it's not gonna trigger, right? But if, for example, I went to there here and say function mouse pressed, right? And say toolbox, no, I can, I can say that because it's not exposed. It's inside this little thing. It's not exposed. I could if, however, I did something like this. All right? So let's tool one equals that. And I add to one there. But if I call to one dot action, now that is going to break. <laughs> right, we want it to break. It is going to break. Let's see. Okay. Bam. Ooh, error. Calls a lot. See, a mouse press. Mouse down. Tool one is not defined. What? Yeah. All right. Let's see. We need to be like tool one. I need to expose it, right? This is like a global bear variable. Hmm. So now I remove this keyword from there. So it is defined now. Okay, see? Line was expecting number for the first parameter. Received empty variable instead, right? So it's, it, it's instead of just erroring out and not doing anything, using it's using zero zero as the as the first coordinate. I wouldn't want that, right? We want it to draw like like this, right? Click and draw, 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 draw. So actually, what we need to do is set up our previous x and y. So if prev x equals no, right? We could also, if we don't know what previous y is going to be, we could add this, but because we're going to edit both values at the same time, we know that, right? We know that we're going to edit both values at the same time. We don't need to do it. We could very well just um, test for one. We can leave it like that, so there's no problem. So we can say prev x is going to be minus x, right? And prev y is going to be minus y. 
and if right so that's the first time the mouse is pressed like the very first second or millisecond that is pressed these are going to change i'm going to write a line from previous x to previous y previous x and y to the mouse x right all right let's see how that works huh okay mm, not too shabby not too bad but it's only one look it's it's whatever i select for the first time so let's see i select down here and then it's going to draw lines right. oh okay but maybe you don't want that actually you just wanted to draw so after the mouse stopped being pressed we're going to now what we're going to do is reset the values of prefix and preview so let's say prefix equals prefix y equals no again so if the mouse was pressed right the mouse is pressed is going is drawing right we already set up the values so here right when it's doing this which is what is happening right now is drawing lines so it's drawing lines but it's drawing lines from the very first time or from the coordinates of the very first time i set it up they're never going back to null they're not being changed so the idea is when i release the mouse or yeah when I release the mouse, that is going to change, right? Uh, so if I release the mouse, the mouse is not down anymore, and I'm not painting. When I'm not painting, this is no, right? But, but, but we have another problem, right? So the first time, we set up the, the coordinates of mouse X and Y. But the subsequent times, when the mouse is still down, is not changing, right? So they actually need to update. So when I do that, prev X equals mouse X, and prev Y, previous Y equals mouse Y. Huh, okay, let's see. How's that gonna work? Oh, look. this has a different behavior. There's like free, free by every time I click, not when I hold it down, right? Okay, so how do we change that? Mm. Okay, so right now it, it, it cannot tell when I'm drawing or not, right? So there's something that's staying the same. Click, click, bam, bam. So it's always saving that last position and it's drawing that line. Always, right? Even if I remove, if I release the mouse, it's previous, right? Previous mouse X. So the last time this is updated, and I release the mouse, it stays, it, it keeps that value. And I'm checking, okay, they're not null, right? They're not null anymore. And I was like, oh, okay, they're not null. So I'm going to draw a line from the previous X and Y, which is the position of where the mouse was, and continue drawing lines. So actually what it's doing here right to draw this line it's skipping this it's like saying oh no they're not no so it's skipping and straight up to drawing a line so what we want is a way to tell hey hold on i had stopped drawing and i want you to reset it right so let's say um mouse is not pressed right And actually, the way that is working right now, it's also um, making it work like that, right? It's because mouse pressed. But I want it to be here, like I want it to draw all the time. 
this was just for testing purposes so we can remove this and what we want is my toolbox right i want to i want to know which tool is active right. so new tool in action actually i want to this dot active tool if this equal no I want to say that this that active tool equals new tool there we go so it's an object but let's remember that tools is it's an array we want it to be the array of the different tools that we get so we actually need to add it as well. So we need to say this dot tools dot push right? new tool. It's an array of the reference to the objects. This dot tool push and right. Mm-hmm. Draw. Uh, draw, draw, draw. Tool test. Okay. So, uh, draw tools. And we have sketch. We want is if tools it's not no or so toolbox it's not no then what we want is to use toolbox dot tools okay we know right now we know it's in zero right that one's the action function, right? Action toolbox right now. But how can we find out like which element is it? Like, right? Actually, what we want is not the, this one. We want is tool that so active tool that action. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Push no. Okay. All right. Now, uh, actually, we need to say that this is that an array. Okay, yeah, that works. Okay, look. Uh huh. Bam. Woohoo! So that's that's good. All right. Now, if you notice, look, it's it's still drawing when it's outside of it. Uh huh. So something that we want, I'm going to show you that later though, is, okay, what if my mouse is not inside the canvas anymore, right? I don't want it to keep drawing, I want it to stop, or maybe you do, but we're going to look into how we can change the behavior so that it stops drawing when the mouse is outside the canvas. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's add another tool. So we're going to add another library, new file. This is going to be line tool.ts, right? There's going to be a function called line, line tool. Mm -hmm. And let's copy something here. Uh, let's see. Let's copy something like this. So I need another icon. Let's look for another icon. I left that here for that reason specifically. And line. Let's see. Mm hmm. Yeah. They. This. I have. I have been here before. It doesn't have line. No, it's like straight up lines. So 
in case we don't have that, we can create our own. Okay, so let's see. In your favorite pixel or image editor, you can create a 50 by 50. Could be any, any size really, but since I'm already saying that they're going to be 50 by 50 in the HTML, you can do it like that. All right, so I want it to be a line or in a thick line. Let's see. Uh, thick line like that uh, and I want it to be black all right mm -hmm. and a five save as I'm gonna go to my repository paint app uh, assets and this is going to be line icon dot PNG all right you can use any type of image. Midline icon. Now, if I did that, for example, just save it and add it. So, so before we said that um, we could do that to one to one, right, but we don't need to set it like that because we don't really reference it later we don't need a reference to it because we're using the toolbox to reference them we're gonna leave it like that I'm gonna actually do a toolbox dot add tool new uh, line tool right right now is because because it's it has basically the same code as as the draw tool is gonna do the exact same thing let's change the tool text to line for example I'm going to save that, right? But what are we forgetting? Here, whenever we add it, we need p5.js to know about it. So, src, and then libraries, and then line tool. Okay, perfect. HTML done. Mm -hmm. And Mm, yeah, let's see. Let's save that. Sketch. And look at the paint app. Oh, it's like that thing is not found. Line icon. Oh, yeah, it's not SVG. Of course, it's PNG. There we go. And we have our line. So if you don't have an icon, don't worry. You can create one real quick. All right. You can go to the interwebs and you can find line icon. There we go. Line. Okay, here's a line. That's a straight line. So let's say diagonal line icon. Okay, you can find icons if you wish. You can create your own if you wish. Right. But now let's go to the logic of it. Line icon. Okay, so for a line, it's something similar to draw when a previous location. Right. When you first hold down the mouse button. You hold it down, you move it, right? You move it. But if you think about it, it's, it's kind of like you save a screenshot of the before you click on, you start drawing the line because then you're positioning the line, right? You're positioning it uh, higher, lower, shorter, longer. So what we need to do is save a screenshot of the previous way the canvas looked. And we use and we do that with the load pixels function. So for the line tool, what we want is actually here, right? So here's where we want to do load actually saves. <laughs> yeah, so load pixels. So we're saving, so this saves, saves the appearance of the canvas before we start drawing. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's a line, but we don't want to add a line. I mean, we wanted to add a line every time for visual feedback. <laughs> Tell us, okay, I'm position positioning the line here and there, but when do we actually want to save it? Oh. 
when the user clicked the first time, moved and positioned the line, and then released the button. Okay, so mouse pressed, positioned the line, released mouse. Okay, so mouse not pressed anymore. So we have true here, we have false here, right? Mouse not pressed anymore. So this is when we want to save the last line that we did, right? So we want to line, actually, what we want is this line, right? And then save it with not low pixels, but update pixels. So what we're doing is update pixels with update pixels. Okay. All right. So the state that it is for now, okay. That is going to be my, my, my safe state, right? The last one. Let's see how it looks. Oh, oh I cannot select it. Oh my God. Shoot. But actually, let's, let's just to troubleshoot this first. I'm going to reverse the order in which we add them. Now, I'm going to draw to her here and that there. Okay. Save and all right. So look, okay. so it's doing, if not intentional, let's see. Line was expecting number and instead it, it received an empty variable. So it's doing the same thing as, as before, right? Right now it's not waiting for me to click. It's just drawing. All right. So what we want is to, all right. So it's saying, okay, no, uh-huh previous low pixels saves appearance of course my previous mouse x let's take a look at how it's working right let's go to the sources let's go to the source Look, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, let's skip that and let's there. Okay. So, in no moment is it, um, it's checking. Okay. So we try to do something similar to our line function, but right now, if you notice, it's actually never hitting this. So it's never, mouse is not being pressed. I'm not pressing the mouse and it's drawing lines. That means that it's jumping to here, to else. So it's drawing lines. And when it's trying to draw these lines, it's like, oh, okay, but pre previous X, it's actually null still, because I never updated it. So I actually want, Another uh, condition, I want it to know if not just that mouse press, mouse press, but I'm also drawing, right? I'm also drawing. And I'm gonna add that as uh, let uh, drawing equals false. So the, by default, I'm not drawing. And with the mouse press, okay, now I start to draw, right? So I'm gonna update that as well. And I do drawing equals true. And if I was drawing down here, right? I was drawing, I stopped. I'm saving the last picture of, of how I uh, positioned the line. I actually not just want to do that, but I also want to say, hey, drawing? Okay, I'm not drawing anymore. Actually, no, false, right? I'm not drawing anymore. Uh, let's see. Let's see how that looks. All right, so it's doing something very similar, right? Bam, I'm deleting it. Bam, deleting it. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, what's the leaning end? This is the leaning end. How do we know? We can check. Look, let's check. I'm going to, okay, what number am I hitting this? All right. So, uh -huh. bam, nothing. I'm not hitting that line yet. I release it. Okay, so I was drawing and I drew a last line and then I'm updating the pixels like and when I hit that yeah you can do like yeah down go deletes it right or it doesn't let's see what's doing yeah so yeah it's just kind of deleting it so let, let's take a minute look actually what i want is to update the pixels here and draw the line draw the last line that's going to be drawn uh-huh okay let's see It's drawn like tiny little lines, right? But yeah, that, that's that's kind of what we want. But we don't want lines like all the time here. Or uh, we do. Let's see, it's low pixels. No, it's not here though. It's here, it should be there. Yeah, 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 okay. So you probably noticed that before I did. Let's see. Bam, bam, okay. So if there is not null, no. okay, yeah, so I need to remove this because I'm updating that all the time. Bam. Okay. Uh-huh. So I'm loading the pixels and I'm drawing a line. Let's see. Okay, that looks cool. So I'm held down, drawing lines, drawing lines, but it's not updated, right? Now this this actually should go here. Right, only one time. Bam. Okay. All right. <laughs> that looks so. <laughs> and then the last one is saved. Okay. That's we we want that. We want the last line to be saved. All right. We're loading the pixels just one, one time. But then we need to update the pixels here. All right. Yes. So what had been happening is that um, we were not loading the picture that we wanted. So let's see, paint. So what we have been doing is we saved right an empty an empty canvas. When we first click, we are creating a a small. We're saving the coordinates, right? But what we're actually saving is this. It's like empty. Bam. That's that's the upload pixels that is in here, right? Save the appearance of the canvas before we start drawing. So it's doing that. It's saving this. It's empty, or whichever state it is. Now, when we when we hold down the mouse, right? And we wanted to do this behavior. So we wanted to, what we saved, right, let's see, I'm going to say, okay, the green box, right? So we saved the green box. This is saved. Saved. Right, we had saved the green box. Now, when we draw, right, 
because that's that, that's what it's drawing doing it's drawing all the time every frame so when it's drawing what is what we want it to do is load the saved load the saved state the saved pixels this right and let's say it had a circle okay so just for continuity so it had a circle so it's drawing everything that it is right there and then what we want is load it and draw a line so that's what uh, we actually needed to do so save pixel save the state so that is doing this part uh -huh. it's saving it's saving it's doing, it's doing that this part right it's saving but then when we draw we want to load it so we we load it with update pixels it's not so not very intuitive but this is load pixels from the saved state we use when we used use load pixels All right that's what it's doing mm -hmm. so that's that's where we want a line to be there so update the pixels so we're s s loading the save state and then drawing a line from the previous x the previous y which is the initial coordinates to where the mouse is and that is what we're doing here right we're drawing a line all right cool so that is that uh -huh. except not yet right so we want to be able to know like which one which tool is active which one it isn't uh -huh. and this is kind of i like this stuff but it's it's can be very tedious but we're gonna do it let's see this dot select tool right or can we can we do something more simple i actually think we can so what we what we want let's see what we want is sketch style style okay so i'm gonna do the selected tool all right this selected tool is going to have a background color of rgba is going to have um let's see 220 to 40 or to 20 to 40. Mm -hmm. yeah you can also click here and let's see hover over there and select which one you want it to become a bluish bluish like what no i want it to be kind of blue blue like that okay mm -hmm. select the tool okay so when does a class have selected tool that's what i need to do here all right um this dot uh, select tool is a function and what am i going to give it all right so who's going to call this who's going to call this so when i click right so when I click on bam, 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 uh, we could do like function mouse pressed and like check where we made the click, like uh, user clicked on on a tool, right? But like, how do we know they clicked on a tool? Like, how do we know? Hmm because this is kind of like global for everything it's like a global event listener hmm? um user clicked on a tool actually what we want whenever we're constructing these tools we want to add a, an event listener so this add tool what we want is 
the uh, new tool new tool dot mouse pressed right and when the mouse is pressed we want to do something right okay so right now let's do um an anonymous function all right let's see we have uh the function not a narrow function yet let's let's do just a function and what i actually like doing is i like doing that all right so this function is going to do alert and we're going to say hey right so let's test that so whenever uh, a tool is added and i click on the tool um, all right. Console. Mouse press is not a function. Tool manager. What the hell? What the hell? Sketch line draw tool. Mouse press. Reference element. So mouse press. Mouse press function is called. Yeah. What the hell? Mouse pressed. Let's see. Am I typing it correctly? Mm -hmm. Mouse press function alert. Hey, hey, yo. new tool, new tool, new tool. Uh, new tool is an object. Okay, good. New tool is an object. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's not new tool, it's not the object that we created, like from. From here no 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 it's actually uh we want this this tool the html elements actually the the p5 element that we created and that's why we're using this function because it's a p5 element function right so we don't want tool what do we want uh, we don't want new tool we want just the tool uh, variable so let's see yeah okay no errors damn hey all right hey hey all right oh look see that's a problem right look so i click on the draw it's like hey but i'm already drawing lines like i don't want that so we're actually going to do that um for these things so sketch one thing that you can do is okay so i created my canvas okay damn guys i have my canvas and i want to create a uh, my canvas dot mouse press and then it's going to actually i will need to do it after everything else has been created and set up perfectly right as like toolbox toolbox I I can actually I can kind of copy that right. If toolbox is not uh, empty, my canvas dot uh, mouse pressed, and then yeah I can I can do this uh, anonymous anonymous function function right. Uh, I can just put there and do that there like that and close this. Oh, everyone's going to be happy. I don't need to do this anymore because this draw is already going to be done by like by my canvas when the mouse is pressed. All right, let's see. Oh, but it's not doing something. Hmm. Right, let's see. Oh, all right. So he's drawing something very quirky. So the mouse is press action. Uh, active tool. All right, yeah, I have I have a better idea then. So let's let's um, 
change this. So, yeah. And, uh, wait, hold on. Do my canvas mouse press function. Yes. That, that is fine. That is fine. Um, but actually going to do toolbox dot um, active equals true, right? And and I'm going to do active tool draw. Mm, Okay, so let's do actually mouse pressed. That's it. Okay, so active tool, and then um, I want to say active equals true. All right, so I'm going to sign in that. So in my line tool, let active equals false. All right. All right. Let active equals false and I want that to be true whenever the function in the mouse actually is on top of the canvas right so not mouse, mouse press is like mouse on I think it is let's see mouse hover mouse over yeah, now we mouse over. Oh, what am I doing? Um, there's a toolbox, right? Yeah, this was the example. Yeah. So, in the sketch, whenever the mouse is over, mouse over, toolbox active, active equals true. And then my canvas mouse out, and then same thing, except false. And in my tools, I want it if mouse is pressed, right? Or I can say if uh, active return, right? If it's not active, return. So same here. My draw tool. Right. If it's not active, return. And everything else should be fine. Let's say. Mm -hmm. Mouse on. Yeah, and this is toolbox 17. Toolbox. Yeah, this is just an example. Active of undefined. Sketch 19. Toolbox. Dot active. Oh, it's active tool. Active tool. So, let's see. What is that a function? If it's not stated otherwise, might be an issue with the arguments passed to mouse over. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> mouse over is a function. And again, mouse over is a function. All right. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Mouse over, mouse out, and let's see if not active, return. Okay, 
So uh, I found what was going on. So what happened was that I have not been making this, uh, exposing it active, right? It's not defined. It had, it was showing us not defined because this was not exposed. So whenever, whenever we called this, right? Active tool, active. It was like active is not defined because I cannot see it because it was not exposed. You need to add that this keyword to expose it. So you can see this property from outside. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's take a look. Mm, let's see. Okay, so I'm hovering the mouse over the canvas and yeah. oh my, okay. So active, it's false. Right, I'm setting it to true. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's take a look at line two. I like saying, oh, hold on. What's, what's active is not defined. Oh yeah, of course. I need to use the this keyword as well. Here and here and here. All right. Okay, what about now? Now, remove that breakpoint. Okay, to there, right? So that way, so what was the, uh, the reason we were doing this? Is because we had been clicking on the icons and, and, and the draw, one, right? We were drawing already, but we didn't want that. Okay, so that's good. Now we can click on these, right? And it's not drawing anymore. Cool. And as we were saying, we wanted to select uh, an active tool, right? So we are clicking on the tools. So we want an event listener on those tools, mouse pressed, mouse clicked actually, mouse clicked. Mm -hmm. So in the toolbox, which is the tool manager, really, all right, when, I, when I'm adding a tool, I'm going to add an event listener to it. So I'm gonna say tool, right, Not mouse clicked, went into a function and this function is going to do, um, okay, so selective tool. Active tool, all right. It's going to be Okay, so what did I click? How do I know what you clicked? Right, because it's just an event listener. Hmm. Okay, so that's that's where we do. We actually use an anon anonymous function with an arrow function. This right. When we use this, when we use an arrow function, the this keyword is going to change. Like install the log this so what's this right let's see um actually let's do that there okay mm -hmm. console I click it uh-huh tool manager is this right okay tool manager um if I use a function, and I click on it, something different. So the this for one is, is different. So here we didn't have any issues because we we were we knew what we were what we wanted to reference, which was the toolbox. We already have that there, right? And toolbox is exposed. 
So there was no problem there. But here, if we use this, right? When we use this, it's actually calling the the button, right? The element that we created is a it's an element. Let's see, see, it's an element called tool of the tool class. So that's that's good. That way we have uh, the ability to select it. But what if we wanted to add uh, access this uh, tools? In that case, if we do console log this uh, tools, right? Nothing's gonna come up. It's like undefined. All right. Oh, okay. So that is where we use another keyword for this. We do let self equals this, right? And if we do self the tools. Now it is defined. It has like it has to be like okay. I have two things, right? Line tool and draw tool. Cool. So now we have an option, uh, a way to access both the the um, HTML elements that we're clicking and the tool manager. Okay, cool. Trying to say um, the HTML HTML element we're clicking on, and the Tool Manager objects we created. Here's both things, and. What I want is this one, right? I want this, and then I want to add a class. Add the class, and I wanted to add the class called selected tool. Yeah, it's a, it should change the background. Let's see. Oh, cool. Ah, oh, but when I click on the other one, right? It's it's uh. Actually, both are selected, but I cannot have both selected at the same time. So that's something that uh, I want to check, right? So uh, one way that we can do that is go through all the tools and remove the selected tool class from them, right? Mm -hmm. So let's see. For let i equals cell the tools that length that's the number of option uh number of tools that we have i is less than actually sorry equals zero and then i is less than that and then i plus plus let's move this here this over here Okay, for all those, okay, if I remove it from everyone, no one's going to have that class, right? So I'm going to do um, this, actually, not this, it's uh, self dot tools in i dot remove class selected tool mm -hmm. I want to do that before I'm adding the class right all right let's see if that works remove class not a function all right so what is <laughs> class remove class Remove class. Okay, so th those are objects now. So I actually want, um, I don't want this. What I want is the, uh huh. So I want the option. Oh, okay. All right. Cool, 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 cool. So actually, we, do, we need to do a select all. All right. Let all tools. 
equals select all b5.js function mm -hmm. look select all it's a method right so it's going to yeah i can I, id class tag or combination so select all did have um tool 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 yeah just tool right now everything that is a tool inspect that mm -hmm. class tool all right so select all the tool and then it's tool all tools length right so uh again i'm i uh, i'm selecting and creating an array of all the tool elements not the objects not the javascript objects but all the um, html elements all right and then it's gonna be all tools and i remove the class and then I'm going to add the class to, to this. All right, let's see. Huh, okay. Mm, not so. Tool, select the tool, select the tool. All tools, remove class. All right, let's take a look at what's going on here. S libraries. Toolbox, and then we want to know what is going on there. All right, all right. Okay, we're selecting that. Tool dot mouse clicked. Let's see. Tool. It says like it's empty. Select all tool. I don't have any class tool. All right. I think I need to add a period to tell. Okay. Things with class tool. All right, let's see. Bam. All right. Okay, so that was it. So, all right. So that was the issue. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah, and, and you probably know that the reason the, like, all the brush, only the black part is black and the rest is being colored the way we set it up by this. CSS uh, styling is because um, this is actually a, um, a pixel array, right? Um, what we saved is pixel, so it doesn't have, it doesn't use any transparency. <laughs> Could is there a way? Let's see. Uh, CSS transparency key. Is there a key? Opacity property. Mm, yeah, we do have an opacity, but is there a key? Is there a key? Mm. No. All right, let's see. No, it's not possible with CSS. I wonder if it's, it's possible in pure CSS. Suppose you have an image. White, white ground, remove the specify color. Yeah, that is a known function for other languages and libraries. When you can select a color, it's like, uh, for example, the idea is if it was possible in CSS, what you could do is like transparency key, right? And, and RGB, for example, in this case, we want white, right? So white is 255. Right, 255, 255, and okay, so that's my transparency key, meaning um, whenever the browser finds that color within this image, 
it's actually transparent and it's not going to show instead what's going to show is what's behind it it's not possible in css then so if you wanted true transparent colors what you would need to do is um, get a trans an image transparent and as a bg image or a png image that supports uh, transparency in this case the one i created in paint doesn't but there are plenty others that that do for example thing it's um what's it called a uh, very common one that it's free uh, uh, the name escapes me right now but okay that's the idea all right so we're selecting all right so line draw oh it's not changing all right cool cool so that's the last step that we need to, to do so when the mouse clicked down 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 well we, we need to select the the active one right so when this is happening right mouse clicked we need to change something right. and we need information about what we're clicking right one what we're clicking so this is the html element we're clicking and the object right we know we have an array of objects there and we need to select okay from from the tools that we have this an array which one are we selecting and which one we want to make the active one right because we already know that active tool is being used here by sketch to actually here used by sketch to to create the action of painting mm -hmm. and let's see mm -hmm. So we want to, we want to say that um, cell dot active tool equals what? It's gonna equal a. Um, actually, probably want to cycle through all the tools and see which one has the same text, right? Same text. Mm -hmm. Let's see. selected text so let's console log this refresh click all right so this is a line tool there's information we have tool text this is what we clicked we know it's select tool but we don't have many other um, pieces of information really we just selected tool we know if for example if we did uh, console log the HTML um, this dot HTML for example and we click on it so it returns it has very little information really but what, what if we did this dot ELT dot HTML uh, uh, that's undefined. Yeah. Um, tools. Right. Hold on. Uh, I don't need that repeated. Just click once. Look, we have the heights. Click function. We don't have much other stuff. Right? We know we're, what we're clicking. But we're gonna have much more information. So what if let's see console log this? We know that this is a an element, right? We know that this is a tool. It has a span, right? So Huh. How about this inner HTML? What does that look like? Let's see. Undefined. Okay, when we're clicking something. Uh 
and we could only see what draw is, right? What it is. This, let's say, ID or class. What class does it have? It has a, a tool class, right? So let's see HTML. Okay, yeah, all right, so I was close. It's HTML. All right. So it has span draw HTML. Mm -hmm. No arguments. So I think there's an option. Uh, Function there has to be like child. If no argument, an array of children, dumb elements. All right, all right, right. So let's see, child. Bam. All right, no list. So I do have a span. This span has HTML. So I know that every tool is going to have two uh, children, the image, which is the icon and the span. So I'm going to, how about let's do child and then uh, one. All right. Draw. Okay. There we go. And of that one, we want the HTML. Here's the inner HTML. HTML. Draw. All right, there we go. So we got that. We got that draw. So we want, all right? So let's select it. Tool equals this. There are many ways you can do it. This is just one of the ways. I've, I've found out a couple other ways. This is another one that we're coming up with right now. Um, let's see. Let's cycle through it. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. But we want to activate it. So we want to say that for let i equals zero, i is less than self.tools.length and when i uh, increases, we want to oh, okay we want to cycle through it and let's see self.tools um first we want to say that self.active tool it's no we don't do that no no we don't need that um, so tools and i dot um, what was it it's a text Tool text, yeah, tool text. So if equals selected tool, so this is the one up here, the the one with the inner HTML that we found, we can place it here. If the tool text equals that, then we're going to do um select active tool self dot active tool equals self dot tools and i and we can actually break that we can break it break right. the break is gonna it goes out of the loop. We don't need to make any more comparisons because we already found it. Now let's see if that works. Okay, line, draw. There we go. We got line and draw. 
Oh, we see the draw is not going outside of it. So that's exactly the behavior we wanted. And with that, we have the first two tools of our drawing app. Well, of course, we can remove this. This console logs. They're just for reference. They can stay there for reference. And draw. We can draw. Cool. Thank you for watching.